Okay. Codes of conduct have become really popular in recent years as ways for companies to protect themselves against litigation, as ways for companies to promote a particular ethos uh, within their structure, and also as ways for companies just to list explicitly the uh, reasons why you should do what you should do within the company and the behaviors that are expected. Certain clear benefits arise from codes of conduct. Okay, although they've got a lot of problems, and I'll talk about those problems in a minute. If you look on page 230, some of the benefits of codes of conduct are listed. They've become really popular in recent years, uh, probably because of high-profile scandals. So codes of conduct helps to express and articulate values and criteria, like I mentioned a minute ago. It sends an ethical message to the organization, so it sets a, sets a, um, sets a sort of you know, standard for the company. It provides guidelines for decision-making and dilemmas, and it prevents abuses within the firm. It also helps foster corporate identity if everyone knows that they're expected to abide by the same level of, of conduct and to uh, act in accordance with it, then there will be greater solidarity within the company. And it also helps promote a particular kind of public image. And as I mentioned, it helps companies avoid litigation, especially if they have listed uh, certain behaviors that are out of bounds, prohibited behaviors. And when company employees violate those behaviors, the company can point to the code of conduct and say, well, this is not something that we sh sanctioned anyway uh, because uh, this person was violating our own expectations. Let me talk about some of the weaknesses of codes of conduct. Okay, so imagine that this is my house right here. And this is the street right here. I've got a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. And the five-year-old is pretty good about staying away from the street, but my three-year-old is not right now. She likes to play in the yard. Sometimes she likes to play as close to the street as she can. Just because she can. Okay, and um, the fact of the rule seems to attract her to the street. There's something about it with my three-year-old, her little three-year-old mind, that makes something that otherwise she might not have much interest in, playing near the street. Now, very interesting to her. So the fact of the rule, or the code, actually has made the prohibited behavior more attractive for her. Okay, and you know, what do we all want to do when we say, see a sign that says no trespassing? We all want to trespass, right? And suddenly you have this desire, deep desire to trespass, which you never knew even existed prior to the moment that you saw the sign that said no trespassing. Okay, um, codes of conduct are good when they are generally written and are intended to inspire or promote um, a particular kind of an ethos or a particular kind of uh, level, particular set of expectations. They are bad to the extent that they tempt people to play as close to the edge of the yard near the street as possible. What's that? The loopholes. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? So a lot of people, for some reason in corporate culture, seem to approach codes of conduct as follows, right? If the code of conduct is telling me what I should and shouldn't do, then if it's not listed there, it must be okay, right? And if a code of conduct is written in a pretty systematic way, you can't write it systematically and prohibit every single possible permutation of bad behavior. But if a code of conduct is written to try to prohibit certain behaviors, and uh, yeah, I mean, a certain behavior is not listed, the person can always say, well, it wasn't listed in the code of conduct. So um, codes of conduct tend to be more successful in business when they are written in a general purpose way and not with the intention of explicitly prohibiting every possible, uh, you know, every possible malfeasant action. And they are good when they inspire people to stay in the middle of the yard and not when they are written in such a way that people become tempted to play as close to the street as possible. Um, the reason why it's dangerous to play close to the street, for my kids at least, 
is they're really uncoordinated. Even if they're totally obeying uh, Papa, they fall over all the time. Like they trip themselves up on their own feet. And if they play really close to the street, they might technically still be within the yard. But who knows if some accident were to take place and they were to fall over themselves and fall out into the street. Okay, and the same thing happens in business, right? So if you play close to the edge of the yard, and it just kind of becomes habitual for you to do that, who knows when you might encounter a situation where suddenly you've got to fudge some signatures right before the end of the quarter, or else your department in the company is now going to lose big time funding. Okay, and you know that those contracts are going to close right after the quarter. So you justify it to yourself because they'll close within several days of the end of the quarter. And you know you're going to lose the funding if you don't just uh, fudge these signatures now. And so suddenly some situation arises that tempts you to fall into the streets. Okay, or maybe you even do it like my kids accidentally do so. Okay, so if uh, codes of conduct do tempt people, to, are, are written in such a way that they tempt people to play close to the edge of the yard, then they tend to fail as codes of conduct. But if there are more inspiring type statements that inspire people to play in the middle of the yard and just uh, develop general purpose uh, articulations of shared values, they tend to be more successful as codes of conduct. More on that is written in the chapter. You can I commit it to your attention. You can look at it on your own time. Are there any questions or comments about codes of conduct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were trying to make you not use it. Sure, sure. So she's like, I have a pen. I'm going to save it all for my senior. <laughs> That's funny. That's but funny. Yeah, she was just gone. Like, um, nobody wants to buy for the mail. Sure, sure, sure. Well, she did the same thing to me. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs>